Hello everybody, uh, Wyatt Tomlin here on my second channel because YouTube is blatantly censoring me on my main channel and uh, shadow banning me, doing everything in their power to strip away my views and likes and even subscriptions actually. Uh, so here I am on my second channel and today I wanted to directly call out the inadequate, uh, spineless, corrupt... Uh, governor of the state of Ohio who lacks the basic uh, moral courage to stand up to his fellow Republicans in the extreme uh, wing of the Ohio legislative branch that want to impose a near total six week abortion ban and quite literally have imposed that following uh, the Supreme Court's decision to uh, overturn the law of the land, Roe versus Wade, that's been uh, in place for 50 years. And following that decision by the, the United States Supreme Court, uh, in which the which was appointed by a president who the American people didn't even elect with the popular vote. So the overwhelming majority of people were against this decision. And that immediately gave uh, the Ohio legislature that was dominated, which is still dominated by Republican control, the opportunity to ban abortion, and that's exactly what they did. They banned abortion af after six weeks um, with no exceptions for rape or incest or a threat to the mother's life. Uh, that extreme near entire abortion ban is currently placed on hold, but is uh, significantly on the books still. Uh, but Ohio has the opportunity to uh, in strengthen uh, the right to an abortion up until fetal viability uh, in the Ohio State Constitution and enshrine it into the Ohio State Constitution and codify it into the Ohio State Constitution so where politicians cannot change or interfere with one's uh, own reproductive health care decisions. So we're going to take a look at this, of this video covering Mike DeWine, a, a, a little clip of Mike DeWine, you know, the governor who who lacks the, uh, he, he, he doesn't have a spine. He can't even stand up. He knows this is wrong. He knows it's wrong uh, to force a 10-year-old girl uh, uh, who is a minor who's been raped to flee the state in order to receive reproductive health care. He knows that's wrong. He knows that's morally corrupt and, and crooked and absolutely disgusting and uh, barbaric, but he's too spineless to stand up against his Republican uh, colleagues because he knows what that will happen. Because when he took action on COVID, his entire party trashed him and he quite literally uh, could have lost the his, his primary in last year's election if he wouldn't have turned around the base to please his fellow Republicans like he's doing right now, trying to ban abortion uh, and trying to resume the six-week abortion ban that's, that, like I said, has no exceptions whatsoever um, and infringes directly on personal medical health care decisions that should remain uh, up to the individual and their doctor and their family and based on their beliefs. Uh, not politicians. Politicians and government and Mike DeWine and corrupt Republicans in Ohio should not be stepping into that personal private decision it should like i said remain up to the individual and their family uh like it's hat like it has for five decades five decades so republicans are trying to go back this isn't something they're trying they're trying to uh keep the same they're trying to go back 50 years uh ago before roe versus wade was established uh as the law of the land. So let's take a look at this clip real quick. For the first time, Governor Mike DeWine is talking about Ohio adopting an abortion rights bill with exceptions for rape and incest. Now that came By the way, like she said, this is the very first time he's talking about it. He's supporting no, the no campaign, but this is the very first time he's talked about it. <laughs> it really says a lot, actually. Came as part of a one-on-one -on -one interview with our Colleen Marshall less than two weeks before Ohio voters go to the polls to decide the fate of issue one, the proposed reproductive rights constitutional amendment. Mm -hmm. Colleen joins us now. Colleen, 
it sounds like a reversal in a way for the governor, right? Well, he is calling it evolution, but it is certainly, Jared, a far cry from the Ohio heartbeat bill that he signed. The governor is working hard to defeat issue one that he says goes too far. But supporters of issue one say the heartbeat bill is what goes too far. It's tied up now. Which it does. And the overwhelming majority of Ohioans agree with that. The heartbeat bill goes too far. Um, and they will show that. They will definitively show that this November by voting yes on issue one. I guarantee it because people are sick and tired of, of corrupt politicians, uh, particularly Republicans and MAGA extremists on the very uh, edge, the very far right scale of the political spectrum, trying to interfere with personal decisions. I mean, this is, this is serious. This is what we have to deal with. Uh, in 2023. This is the same shit we've been dealing with throughout the entire founding of our country, and now Republicans are trying to take us back uh, even, even further. Now in the courts, but it would outlaw abortion at the moment. A heartbeat is detectable, usually around six weeks into a pregnancy, and it has no exceptions for rape and incest. <laughs> I know. The governor says he's been traveling around the state. He's hearing from Ohioans who believe there should be those exceptions. And even though it's not right for his personal beliefs, he says maybe it's time to look for a middle ground. I asked about the conservative. Rep and, and by the way, it's, it's funny. It's very ironic and funny how he says middle ground when he is supporting the no campaign, which is no middle ground. Voting yes is a clear middle ground. Voting yes ensures and codifies the right to reproductive decision uh, decisions, not only abortion, but contraceptives, uh, fertility treatment, birth control, whether to continue one's own pregnancy, and miscarriage care. And by the way, like I said before, it's not abortion up until birth, like Republicans are trying to spread the notion that it is, because it's, it's not. It is not allowing, voting yes does not allow abortion up until birth. It allows abortion up until fetal viability, which is the point in time where a undeveloped fetus cannot survive outside of the womb. It cannot, it cannot, it can't even survive outside of the womb. And the Republicans are trying to say that that, that thing, it's not even alive. They're trying to push the notion that it is alive when it, when they very damn well know it's not. And it's very, I think it's very, I find this very deceitful as well, that this news anchor uh, said that you know, the yes campaign is trying to say that the heartbeat bill goes too far. It's not it's not a matter of opinion. It's not a matter of saying it like it's an opinion. It's a fact that it goes too far. And let just continue this for a second. Republicans who lead the legislature, they fought hard for the heartbeat bill and have had no interest in middle ground or compromise. I'm glad she did mention that part because they, they have had no interest whatsoever in compromise. They've rejected every single attempt to bring legislation for, for a co compromise on reproductive decisions. They've re rejected it. Uh, anything that goes after six weeks, they want to ban it with no exceptions. A 10-year-old girl can be raped and they don't care. <clears throat> That's sick. I, I think that uh, one of the things that... Here's the raisin looking uh, right now that we have obviously in Ohio is the ability for people to go to directly uh, influence what a law is or what a constitutional amendment is. And so that pressure, that fact that that exists, uh, I think will impact the legislature. And let's let's say the legislature doesn't do anything. Certainly people can then go back. Uh, and there'll be great pressure on a, to put, have a constitutional amendment that actually does, in fact, reflect the majority uh, vote. Uh. Yeah, that, that's very, that's very uh, generally speaking as well, because you supported the previous issue one that was held in, on August 8th, two months ago, or yeah, two, two, yeah, two months ago, or th coming up on three months ago, you supported yes on the previous issue one, which which would have raised the threshold in order for a constitutional amendment to appear on the ballot from a basic simple majority, 50 percent to 60 percent, 60 percent. This is the guy 
this is the guy who's talking about this majority and all this bull crap when he and other Republicans in the state directly endorsed a, a yes vote to raise the threshold on the previous issue one uh, that, that would have silenced voters and that would have gotten rid of the majority rule factor that has determined democracy in Ohio up until this point. He wanted, along with Republicans across the state, wanted to raise the uh, threshold and raise the requirements in order for an amendment to be to appear on the ballot and to get passed. Uh, but that is another thing that, that is kind of confusing. People have very hard time figuring out the difference between that issue one and the, and the upcoming issue one. First of all, the issue one in August is over. That's done. But to sum the issue one in November up, it is uh, the Ohio Reproductive Rights Initiative, which is officially titled the Reproductive or the Right to Reproductive Freedom with Protections for Health and Safety, and is also listed as issue one, which that fact alone that it's that they decided that the Republicans uh, in control s s uh, decided to name it issue one as well was very intentional. This wasn't something that was done on by accident. They they did this on deliberately to confuse Ohio voters because Ohio voters are sitting there like, hey, we already had an issue one. So are we voting on the same exact issue again? No, you are not. This is a completely different election. Uh, the previous issue one did not pass uh, in which Republicans wanted it to pass. It did not pass. It kept the Ohio Constitution as it is. And this issue one coming up in November codifies reproductive rights in the Ohio Constitution uh, that allows the citizens, the individuals that it primarily affects to carry out their own personal health care decisions without involvement and interference from the government. This should, this should just be common sense. I mean, uh, who's to, who can tell you, who should be able to tell you uh, what to do with your own body and draw the limit, not even knowing or not even listening to the uh, predicament in the situation that they are in. I mean, this is exactly what's happening. Republicans and who have imposed the near total ban, the near, the near total abortion ban in the state of Ohio, they they don't know the specific situation, but without you know having certain exceptions, they are banning it with period after six weeks with with even if you were raped if it involved incest, or even if it was a minor who was raped. Uh, I, I'm, I'm so appalled by this, and, and everybody in Ohio should be. And now is our action, now is our opportunity to stand up against the extremism and the uh, attack on reproductive freedom by voting yes on issue one this November. We, ha we finally have the opportunity to protect reproductive freedom that Ohioans, the overwhelming majority of Ohioans support. Uh, so I'm, I'm very confident that we will show up. Uh, well, not me, because I'm, I'm not old enough to vote, unfortunately, which is very uh, unfortunate because it affects me and it affects my future. And, you know, contraception, it affects decisions that will have an impact on me in the future. And I don't even get to have a say in, in that decision because I'm not eligible to vote because I'm not 18. Uh, where the majority uh, of people are in the state of Ohio. DeWine is actively working against issue one. He argues that it would. Yes, he is. Allow for abortion at any time during a pregnancy. That's false. That is false. I said that already. I said that at the very big beginning of this video. This is the exact same thing that they are running on. The entire no campaign, the entire anti-choice campaign, the entire anti-reproductive freedom campaign is entirely running on the notion, the untrue notion that voting yes allows abortion up until birth. And it does not, it does not allow late-term abortion like they are uh, constantly claiming. And I'll even prove it to you. I'll prove it to you. What this does is it restores the Roe, uh, it restores the Roe versus Wade era access in Ohio, protecting quote, this is a quote, the right to abortion up until the point of fetal viability, end quote, while, permit, while permitting restrictions after. It permits 
uh, restrictions after, very, very, very few exceptions after, and that would be exceptions of, this is another quote, quote, the pregnant patient's life or health. That means if the woman's life is at stake uh, and is in jeopardy, if she does not receive an abortion, then she can receive an abortion after that point in time. And keep in mind, that's to save her life. That's to save her life. Talk about being pro-life when, when Republicans don't even support uh, the, especially don't even support the woman to have a choice, even if her life is in uh, jeopardy. That is- Although supporters say it allows- That's absolutely crazy. Hold on, let's go back a little bit. DeWine is actively working against issue one. He argues that it would allow for abortion at any time during a pregnancy. Although supporters say it allows for restrictions at the point of viability and in only rare cases to save the life of a mother, for example, would abortion occur after that point. And you know, Colleen Marshall, the lady who's reporting on this, that was a little deceitful on her part where she said, she said that supporters of the yes campaign say it does not uh say it does not allow late-term abortion that's not an opinion that's a fact you can see it right here on the ballot itself word for word the right to abortion up until fetal viability fetal viability is not up until birth for god's sakes why can't people just acknowledge that that's a fact it is it is a fact that fetal viability is not up until birth Fetal viability is the ability of a human fetus to survive outside of the uterus, to survive outside of it. That means up and, uh, before, before fetal viability, the human fetus cannot survive outside of the uterus. Uh, and it says, it says medical viability is generally considered to be between 23 and 24 weeks of digestional age. That is not up until birth not up until birth. Uh, this differs uh, in certain situations. Viability depends upon factors such as birth weight, digestional age, and the availability of advanced medical care. Uh, so it, it varies on, on different For situations. restrictions at the point of viability and in only rare cases to save the life of a mother for a And that's true. I showed that as well. I proved that as well, actually. Uh, while permitting restrictions after. And those restrictions only include the quote that I had previously mentioned, the pregnant patient's life or health. Life or health. That is not abortion up until, up until birth. That is exceptions for if, like I said, the mother's life and health is at jeopardy and is at stake. Um, and the main point about this election that people don't acknowledge, that a lot of people don't acknowledge, especially conservatives and right-wingers who are anti-choice, they're not pro-life. I want to get that very clear. The, the um, thing that they keep spreading is that they're pro-life. They are not pro-life. They don't give a shit about people's lives. Um, and it proves it. The six-week abortion ban proves it. They are willing to fight for or protect the life of a unborn fetus who is not even halfway developed over a mother who is dying if she doesn't receive uh, reproductive access. They are putting unborn kids. That's literally what it is, unborn. They even say it when they're in, in an argument they're trying to use. They say, we're protecting unborn children. So you're protecting children who aren't even born yet. <laughs> what the hell? You're protecting children who aren't even born yet and aren't even fully or even halfway developed over a 10-year-old girl who is very conscious and who is very alive and who is actually living uh, you are you are wanting to force her to give birth to her rapist baby, the baby that she didn't even have consent over. This is absolutely appalling. Uh, but to make it to clear it up even more, what this means is is uh, uh, puts in the Ohio Constitution and it ensures if issue one does get passed in in November, which I am most definitely sure, uh, sure that it. That it will because people support uh like i said 
ch the cho the option of choice. And what this would do, issue one, would uh, guarantee every individual has the right to make and carry out one's own personal, own personal, personal reproductive health care decisions, including but not limited to decisions on contraception, like I said, fertility treatment, uh, continuing one's own pregnancy, miscarriage care, and abortion up until fetal viability. And the, the, the B part, the B section of this is the state shall not directly or indirectly burden, penalize, prohibit, interfere with, or discriminate against either an individual's voluntary exercise of this right or a person or entity or entity that assist on individual exercising this right. I think it's very clear that this this is not about abortion, like people claim it is. Uh, this is about choice for the eighteenth point six billionth time. This is not about abortion. This is about choice on any reproductive healthcare decision that's been significantly under attack in particularly Republican states and especially in the state of Ohio. Vote yes on issue one.